in Eatonville. Look what's going on out here. Everybody needs to see this. There's the main highway right there. Looks like we got a uh, an active COVID quarantine site going in here. So everything's been logged, all of that. Just wanted to uh, show you guys the main road there. Check that out. We got a gate here. There's also a gate over there by uh, that dozer. Two gates going into this place. Looks like they're just getting to work on it. There you have it, folks. They're doing it. They're coming along. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining me. The video I'm bringing you today is about the lack of transparency and propaganda that is spread by the ruling class and its agents. It seems pretty obvious. The purpose is to cause confusion, and then when the masses hear it, they turn to the puppets of corporate media for reassurance, and they are told that people that think like us are crazies for thinking there is a boogeyman in government out there to get us. Government is here to protect us after all, right? Not remove our freedom as individuals and enslave us to corporate masters. The video I played for my introduction to this story and the video I'm showing you now are the reason I'm bringing it to you. Both of these videos are documenting the same plot of land located in Pierce County, Washington. The land has been owned by the Nisqually tribe since 2014, but I'll get into that in just a bit. First, let's take a look at the second video I have and what the enforcement agents from the tribe say about what's going on. Then I'll be back with some more comments and some research into what may be going on. Taz News Tacoma. I'm out in the Yelm Roy area. Um, I got a message saying that they were uh, doing a COVID quarantine site out here. They were building it. Uh, I drove by and I've seen a uh, good presence here. They, they've got a uh, police activity here, or police presence, I shouldn't say activity. Uh, so I'm going to uh, take a little video, show you guys. Uh, I'm on 507 out here in the Yelm area. Uh, They've been clearing this area away, I guess. Uh, there was gates up here. So I'm just gonna take a little video. They've got a security or a police presence here. This guy in the blue truck followed me from, uh, well, actually he's been out here. There was another truck, I'm sorry. They've been clearing this area out for a while. Uh, we've got this guy here, and then you got this guy over here, and that's actually the truck that's been uh, flying by looking at me. So I'm gonna take a walk down uh, 507, it's raining. Uh, he just moved his vehicle so he could uh, record me. So, uh, must be concerned. They had, uh, there's the gate right there. That's the gate right there. They had the uh, signs on it. <clears throat> And uh, so now they're moving closer. I'm going to go across the street. And now that I showed up, I'm getting, uh, there's another vehicle that went down this way. So they're trying to tell me, the guy that uh, I ran into at the store was telling me that it's for, uh, the Indian reservation, but the video I got earlier 
was showing that uh, <clears throat> this place was a COVID quarantine site. And now the signs are off the gates. And uh, now they're more concerned about what I'm doing. This uh, Acura just went by and they were uh, giving me the thumbs up so they know what's going on here. Uh, but yeah, I was told it was a quarantine site that they were clearing out the area for a quarantine site. Uh, but now this truck that's been following me has got his lights on, so it's confirmed he is a, a police. But I've had uh, I've had a few vehicles go by now, uh, just like this. So, you tell me what they're doing here. They got big dumpsters out here. They're clearing it out pretty good. Uh, some of the some of the local people around here are saying, yeah, they've had uh, different type of people out here. So you can imagine what type of people they are. Government. So, uh, uh, like I said, I'm out on, uh, I believe it's 507 on uh, How's it going, sir? You, you know what they're doing here? I think they know what it is. I it's think. Camp. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, COVID. Uh, I know. They yeah. had a sign. Yeah. On the gate yesterday. Or I got called to come out here and stuff. Uh, I'm an activist. Uh, are you? Yeah. Well, we are too, just citizens. Yeah. You yeah. Know, but we I've got a YouTube channel that I that I post everything on. Uh -huh. This guy has been following me ever since I came out here. Uh, yeah, Right, right. I was down at that little store down there, mm -hmm. and I was asking questions, and then all of a sudden this guy said, yeah, and he followed me all the way, and I didn't know if he was a police officer or whatever he was. So I'll confirm now what he is. And he came up to see us, and we just turned around and kept going there. Yeah, he moved his vehicle so he could start filming me, so... You live around here? That's where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. I'm known as Taz News Tacoma. What I normally do is I record the police, federal government. I keep them accountable for their actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, I got called on this one saying that they were out here doing this. And uh, these guys were trying to tell me it was a tribal uh, rehabilitation center. I saw yeah. But. I got other information saying it's something else. The banner they had on the gate. Yes, yeah, that's what that's COVID what I something. yeah that's what I got too. Yeah. So now they're con, uh, concerned about me being out here, I guess. What's that? If they wouldn't try to keep it a secret, we would be out here, would we? Or oh, exactly. And if they make things transparent, sign, yeah. yeah. They don't take their sign down. They got two Are cuts you, over there, a cuff over there. Are you guys vaccinated too? No. Okay, good. Are you? No. <laughs> We're not going to do that we shit. Don't wanna be, we don't want to be killed off. Well, actually, I did get one jab in February. So I'm waiting to see if I can get that fixed. Yeah, you can't tell me that they're just doing this to, yeah. No. It makes no sense. You got a gate there, but you got a wide open field. They haven't finished yet. Oh, that's yeah. when you'll start seeing the little houses, little oh, yeah. trailers. And, and you know what? Just what is this all about? Nobody yeah. is reporting on it. It's, it's right. Except for TikTok and Facebook. Exactly. So. But yeah, I'm going to walk across. I'm going to see uh, how interested they are in me. So. Carl, you want to go over there with us? No, I'd rather have you guys stay over here and film if you want to. That way you guys can be oh, safe. Yeah.
How's it going, buddy? Not too bad. I'm Corporal. I've now worked for the Squally Tribe. You work for what? The Squally Tribe. Oh, wow. the land here and stuff. All right. Did you have any questions about it? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. You know, I'm, I've got reports. Uh, sit, we'll sit by our way in the sure. Yeah, I know there's, I saw that there was some sort of video that was going around about the sign they put up. Man, it's loud. Do you want to step back? No, I'm, not, I'm good right here. I don't want to go on the land. Essentially, the tribes owned this land for like seven years. And after COVID, when people got COVID on tribal land, they had to come out here and quarantine so away from the community. And that's it. So, so what are they building here? Nothing. Well, they logged this so they could put a fence up. Well, there's got to be a reason why they put a fence up. I think it's just there's no fence there. The tribe likes to protect their land, I'm pretty sure. I think that's it. Up there people are saying, so, what's up with the presence of you guys out here? It's just in a response to people walking on the land that they didn't want to. They want people like breaking down the gates or destroying anything that tries to build. Well, I see you got a ga- I see you got a gate there with yeah, no purpose really because you got open area all around it. Yeah, it was bad timing because this was all you know timber and you know. It was all built. So up you're telling me this is, they're just clearing it just to clear it? Yeah, they clear it because they wanted to build a fence. And I don't know, maybe making a field so they, they can play baseball. Uh, that's your name there? Upton? Yeah. All right. All right. So that's a story you're giving, huh? Yeah, that's, that's a story. All right, all right. All right, thanks. All right. A few moments later. So this is a lot of work for just a fence. So, and now we got another guy coming up to talk to us. Let's see what he has to say. How's it going? All right, how about yourself? Well, we just came out to, to see what they were doing out here. Yeah, they're clearing the trees to make a fence along this the property here, the Scully Tribal property. Yeah, so what are they building back here, though? So it's their property that they're housing uh, tribal members for their quarantine for if they have COVID. Okay. That's all it is. All right. They cleared okay. out these trees. Some of them had some rot in it, and then they're trying to build a fence along the road. Kind of heavy presence just for something like this, ain't it? Just got to make sure the tribal people that are here are safe. All right. That's the story you're giving? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. You have a good one. Ah. After hearing what the two enforcement officers for the Nisqually tribe had to say, now I want to take a look at what the actual information from Pierce County tells us about that uh, that piece of property uh, there's actually two of them right next to each other according to pierce county's records even though they are two separate parcels it is kind of considered one property and it is the brighton creek healing and retreat center owned by the nisqually indian tribe and it looks like so they bought it in 2014 uh, in august of 2014 and it looks like up until recently at least most of the everything was done on this property here where the buildings are it looks to me like this spot here is fairly new and if we zoom in there you can even see it there's like a skitter here here's one of the trailers that maybe they have parked there now but there's several spots for trailers just tells me this is fairly recent and i didn't find a permit on it on this improvement here i didn't find any permits for this piece of property which is the one you saw in both those videos this is the one next to it But this is the one that you saw in both of those videos. It had the trailers and all these trees right up here were cleared. Those are all gone now. Because, you know, you heard that first guy Upton say they're they're maybe going to put in a ballpark or something like that so kids can play there. Because that makes sense to put a ballpark in a COVID quarantine site, right? I mean, I guess since it hasn't been isolated in a human, it really isn't unsafe for them to be in a quarantine site that for something that hasn't been isolated in a human, so they can go ahead and do that. But I'm just saying, if we're playing their little game, it doesn't seem very smart to put a playing field in a quarantine site unless you're 
I mean, if he's admitting it, that it's a quarantine site and they're going to allow the kids to play in the playing field while they're at the quarantine site, that's one thing. But that's not where he was going. He was, oh, we're just putting up a fence and they're going to put some fields in here. It's going to be great. So anyways, moving on from that, like I said, I just wanted to show you, here's the road, uh, 46th Avenue South that Taz was on, uh, that he parked on. So he was just right here. He walked down here and those were those guys were parked. They did follow him, is my understanding, uh, beforehand when he was kind of driving around and maybe after. Well, so let's move on here. Let's get some information about these properties. So we'll just click on this one first. Gives you the parcel number, the address, everything, the how many acres. Uh, 12.42 acres, $214,500 is what the assessed land value is, and $0 worth of improvement value. Uh, so if you click on this here uh, about my property, I've already clicked on it. It'll take us here. This page where you can get all sorts of information. You can get ecology information, tax information, and all that. So let's click here, and we'll see. This is if you click on the tax assessor's information, it tells you that's all the information. That's how I knew it was the Brighton Creek Healing Center. It tells you who owns it. Uh, you can get tax values, land. You can get the buildings, when it was sold. So that's where you can see. August 13th of 2014 is when the Nisqually Indian tribe bought it. Pull it up on the map that we just saw. We don't really need to do that because we just saw it. We can pull up the image here. Uh, so it says this image, yeah, right here. It says 415 of 2021. So April 15th is when this image was taken. You see got picnic tables, a few trailers in there. Uh, it looks like they have a big dumpster in the back there. One of those big giant dumpsters. Uh, so nothing, you know, in particular, any nothing out of the ordinary there, I guess you could say. Uh, however, I do want to, so when you go back to this page, right down here, Documents, Applications, and Permits. So let's just go down to that one. Click on it, see what comes up. Okay, so, oh, no permits were found matching the criteria. Well, let's see. So that there's the parcel number, and it says no permits. I don't know. In the state of Washington, it's a pretty environmental state. It seems to me if they're going to be clearing those trees, they probably would have had to get a permit of some sort. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I know on this side of the state, some builders that have cleared some trees had to get permission from the state or the county first to do that. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have to on this one. So anyways, moving on. You see there's no permits for here. Now let's take a look. So we'll go right here to this next property, this one here also owned by the tribe it's actually connected if i zoom in here you can see there's a walkway going right here something right there is a building back and right up to this road you can see the road that's where upton was talking to taz was on this road right here coming into the property these are all the ones that have trees that have been cleared and this you know the gate must be in here because that guy said oh there used to be trees around it so anyhow this is the this is the other property here so we're going to take a look at it Okay, so let's pull it up here. Okay, so there we can take another April 15th, 2021. You can see there's a car there. Just one building is all they took a picture of. Okay, so we'll move on from there. Let's go to the permits. So when we go to this page here and we click permits, it's going to bring us here. And look, oh my Lord, there's all sorts of permits in here. But if we're going to look from when the tribe owned it, we got to look from 20, 2014 and later. So right here, 2013, right there, 2021. We have submittal documents that has been processed. They, were, they submitted this in June on June 7th of this year. Uh, and it has building, plumbing, and mechanical permits is what they applied for. So we can just go ahead and click on that, and it'll actually bring it up here so we can see all the information. Uh, so here's that permit from KMB Architects. Uh, says this project consists of a remodel of the existing men's and women's restrooms on the main level and replacing the second floor porch stairs and surrounding concrete sidewalks. Hmm, I didn't even see any second floor stuff. Anyways, let's look at the documents here. See if we can pull this up. So yeah, here's the actual building application. Brighton Creek Conference Center has the address. Uh, the address. Here, if you want to get a hold of, here you go. Uh, the Nisqually Indian Tribe, pam.james at nisqualyhealth.org. Uh, her phone number is 360-458-3911. So maybe we should call Pam and see exactly what's going on there. She seems to know. 
Uh, here's the architects, also has their address. Uh, the contractor, Nisqually Construction Services, with their license number, blah, 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 blah. So we go down here. It's just the entire application here. So it's telling you exactly they want a water, they want some water piping they're going to modify. Uh, put in eight floor drains, a hose bib, four lavatories, a urinal and two recessed or floor mounted heaters. So that's what they're asking to do. I think I read on here somewhere too where it actually breaks. All right, here you go. This project consists of a remodel of the existing men's and women's restrooms on the main level and replacing the second floor porch, stairs, and surrounding concrete areas. So I'm gonna go back. I don't see any second floor. I don't see any second floor on any of these. Let's look at this real quick here. Okay, so it could, this building right here looks like it has a second floor. So this must be the one that was in the picture, and this one is behind it. So that must be the main big building there. Okay, so let's get back to these applications. Site plan. Let's see what the, okay, so this just shows. So here's different codes they have to meet. Uh, has how many occupants can be there. So let's just read this again. Project description, a remodel and update of existing men and women's restrooms, as well as completely replacing the second floor porch, stairs, and surrounding concrete sidewalks. The entire remodel focuses on ADA accessibility and safety for tenants and guests of the center. Hmm, interesting. ADA accessibility and safety for tenants and guests of the center. Tenants and guests. Huh, interesting. Uh, just looking to see if we have anything else in here that's interesting. So here's the schematics of the building. This must, oh yeah, here's the bathroom that they want to do the remodeling in right there. Uh, and here's the, I guess, Oh yeah, here you go. Outline of the second floor, outline of the stairs and ports. So this is what they're fixing here. And then uh, the concrete planter boxes. They did say some of the concrete around there. So there's that. Let's see what we got here, this other document. And then we'll just move, move on to some more talking about things, some points I want to make here. So I'm going to put links to all this stuff in the description of this video so you guys can go check it out for yourself. There's all sorts of uh, related information in here. You can get all the people that approved the permits, all the inspectors. You can get information on everybody that was involved in this here. So you can, if you know, it doesn't just have to be me doing this. Anybody can contact uh, the people here. Like I said, we should contact the lady that works for the Nisqually Indian Tribe in charge of this whole project here. And maybe ask her some questions. Maybe I'll do that on Monday. Um, but there are just a couple other uh, things I wanted to kind of point out here. So first of all, the law enforcement officers that were out there for the Nisqually tribe. Now, it's my understanding this is not on the Nisqually Indian Reservation. This is just property in Pierce County that the Indian tribe owns. So it's not on the reservation. So my first question is, does law enforcement, does Nisqually tribe law enforcement, police, do they have jurisdiction outside of their reservation? That would be like if the Washington State Patrol went into Oregon to try to enforce some laws. That wouldn't really work that good. They don't have jurisdiction there. So I don't know exactly how it works with Indian tribes and their reservations, but my guess is once they're off the reservation, they don't have jurisdiction. Now, their pro my guess is that they probably just hired some of their enforcement officers to do security since they're paying them anyways they just hired them and sent them out to do security there uh, we've seen that in downtown seattle actually amazon bought a building and they pay washington state patrol for, as the security because then if somebody comes on they can actually make an arrest right there because they are a credited law enforcement agent i'm guessing that's the same thing why the nisqually indian tribe has them out there i did think it was interesting the second guy that taz talked to if you saw when he walked away, it didn't say police on his vest, it said corrections. So he's a corrections officer out there working uh, working security, I would assume, is what his actual title is out there. Uh, 
So the other thing I just wanted to, let me just check my notes here real quick. Uh, the other thing, just regarding some of the comments that Upton and the other guys said there. Uh, so if they've had this for seven years, and this has been this retreat and healing center for seven, as long as they've had it, why are they just now putting up a fence? And why weren't there any permits for the improvements they made to it? The, you know, that looks like pretty new gravel and everything in there, uh, where those trailers are in that property. Uh, so why didn't they get any permits for that? Maybe permits aren't required to put in a road into your property or make improvements to it. Maybe they aren't. I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to make a phone call and check some, some statutes to make sure about that. Uh, but my other thing is, I wonder if they're just using this. They're just calling, they put that banner up there saying it's a quarantine site. Because a lot of these municipalities, state, county governments, and I'm guessing reservations as well, uh, received a lot of money from the federal government and the state government probably as well too, but mainly the federal government really gave them a lot of money. And I did a story here in the town I live in, in Liberty Lake last year, where basically they just started spending it because they said, well, if we don't spend it, we're going to lose it. They're going to take it back in, an, in, a, in another month, so we just need to spend it. Uh, so I'm wondering if maybe that's what the Nisqually tribe here has just kind of said, yeah, this is now a quarantine site, and so now we have this money and now we can put up a fence. So that's one reason maybe they could be doing this here, these improvements, is they just want to use their, their COVID funds before they disappear. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out because that does happen. If you don't understand that governments do that, that they won't allow money to go back to the taxpayers because then the next year when it comes to budgeting, oh, well, now we don't have, now the taxpayers don't have to give us as much money because we saved it. Whereas if you spend it, now, oh, well, we still need that same amount of money. We spent it all last year, so give it to us again. So... That's why I wanted to point that out. And then my other question is, since these two properties are considered one in the tax information here, why are they building a fence just on the one property and not both of them? If they go together, it seems like you would want to put it around the entire thing. They just want to keep, I guess they just want to keep, keep the, peep, the tribal members on the one plot of land safe, but not the other ones. Because that's what he said, it's about keeping them safe, so... Anyway, it's just kind of weird. It's interesting that none of those applications that we looked over, they just all have to do with mechanical things, plumbing inside the building. Like, like you mentioned there, nobody, no mention of anything else. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, this story isn't open, or this story isn't finished yet. Uh, there's probably a lot more to come out. I know Taz is going to go back there. He's had some more requests to go back there. Uh, but specifically, uh, we need to keep an eye on this to see what they're building. Are they following what they said they were going to be doing in these permits here. Are they doing other work? Um, it'd be interesting if anybody actually saw any work going, being done in those other buildings. Uh, if, you, if anybody watching this video has any information about this, uh, get a hold of Taz News Tacoma. I got a link to his channel and his original full video in the description below. Uh, as well as you can email me. Uh, my email address is questionableauthority at protonmail.com and it is also listed in the description below. So if anybody has any information or anything that can help us out with this to try to figure out exactly what they're doing here, uh, please share it with us because clear as day on the one video, it had a banner on that gate that said COVID quarantine site. But now they took that down because apparently that drew too much attention and now they're saying they're just putting up a fence. You know, it's not very transparent. That's, it just goes back to that. It's not very transparent and it builds more and more distrust between the people and the government. So with that, I'm going to end this video. I will be back probably next week with a little bit more information and an update with it. Like I said, I'm going to try to call the lady uh, for the tribe that is in charge of this project and see what she has to say about it since I have her phone number now. Until then, always remember to live free and have a great day. Thank you again for supporting my channel. Just by watching my content, you are supporting my work. However, if you want to support me in other ways, Sign up on censorship fighting YouTube alternatives like Library, which uses Odyssey for its video platform, or Hive. Use the links in the description to earn yourself some decentralized crypto for getting started. There are non-cryptocurrency platforms as well, but you might as well get something of value in return for your support of your favorite content creators. Links to all of the platforms you can find questionable authority on are in the description. And don't forget to check out the Questionable Authority merchandise store.